Hello and welcome to this video tutorial course on creating character designs for use in Toon Boom Studio. Today we're going to look at lots of different tips, techniques and exercises for creating some nice solid character designs for your animation projects, personal projects uh, and portfolio in general. So we're going to cover a lot of ground in this course. So we'll be looking at things like um, using basic shapes for creating the framework for our characters. Uh, we'll be looking at creating the individual features of the face, the placement of the features uh, to create subtle differences in look. So these are all things we need to look at as we're creating characters. You don't want to just go in and quickly scribble a face on a character. You know, you, you need to think about things like personality, um, and things like that when you're creating characters. So the first thing we're going to look at is employing the use of basic shapes for our designs. So rather than just designing a character haphazardly scribbling away on, on a piece of paper, uh, we're going to use these shapes to create a nice solid framework. So what I've got here on the screen is a square a triangle and a circle shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the square and just start to manipulate it, try and push and pull certain areas of the shape just to see how many variations I can come up with and just see how far I can push it. So this is a good exercise for getting the creative muscle working. So, you know, when you start to draw at the start of the working day maybe start with an exercise such as this um, to try, try and push your ideas and also to loosen up a little bit so a bit like if you're talking to someone on the phone you know you, you tend to maybe doodle on a nearby pad or a newspaper you know you may sit there drawing squiggles or stars or spirals and things like that and essentially what you're doing, you're kind of loosening up. So, um, you know, using this exercise um, helps with that and also gets you to understand the shapes a lot more. So you can see here this square, I've kind of elongated a version. I've pushed a side in. Um, there's a version here where I've kind of bulged the sides out. So that, that would make a nice beginning for a head shape on a very simple character. Okay, and on this shape here, I'm kind of pushing the sides in, kind of curved in. So it's almost as if I'm holding maybe a drinks can and I'm kind of squeezing it in my hand. Um, you know, pushing the shape in this way, you can come up with lots of ideas for, you know, various body parts for the characters. At the moment on the screen, it may look you know, kind of a bit odd, you know, you're looking at just simple shapes being pulled around and so on. But um, this really is kind of the the starting point for creating some nice solid characters. So definitely create these kinds of uh, shapes in a sketchbook daily. Um, just when you're starting out, just so you can learn to understand shapes. Um, and once we get into the lessons on creating head shapes and body shapes and so on. The, this exercise here will become a lot clearer. It will make a lot more sense. Okay, so this shape here, I'm just kind of curving it outward. So, you know, almost as if I've got a tube here and I've just bent it slightly. So something like this would make a nice you know, kind of curve for an arm and a leg or maybe a kind of hunched over torso. So these are the things I'm thinking of when I'm pushing these shapes. And look at things around you, you know, look at um, maybe a, a coffee cup, um, a lamp, anything, a musical instrument, and just try and simplify the object into simple shapes. You know, see if the shapes have been pushed in any way. Um, you know, try and replicate those objects in your drawings. Um, it's very good for the creative muscle just to allow you to see things in shapes. It just it just makes things a lot easier when you start to create 
your character designs. Okay, so this triangle, you know, I've kind of pushed the bottom side inwards. And this one here, I've kind of bulged one out. Um, with the triangle, it's a lot more difficult to come up with um, lots of variations, you know, simply because you've only got three sides. So you've got less to play with. Uh, so you'll most likely run out of ideas on the triangle uh, way, way ahead before, you know, you run out of ideas for a square or something like that. Okay, so this one looks kind of like a shark fin. So, you know, that, that could be, you know, you could combine that shape with an oval uh, for the body of the shark to, you know, that could be a good starting point for creating a nice, simple cartoon shark. Um, you know, when you're working on your own, it's good to create these characters as quickly as possible and as simply as possible. You know, you don't want to give yourself too much work. Um, but you want this, the designs to be very solid, you know, it'd be a shame to create a fantastic animation, you know, a great idea, a good script or a good gag or put an animation to music and it, it falls down at the last hurdle just down to kind of sloppy artwork, character design and so on. So, um, you know, putting the extra time into learning these techniques will, you know, they're definitely worthwhile. Okay, so there's just a handful of ideas um, for the triangle. And feel free to try a few other simple shapes. You know, don't don't go um, picking too, too obscure a shape, uh, like a star shape or a hexagon or something like that. Try and keep it, it nice and simple. Okay, so moving on to the circle now. Um, best way to work with the circle shape is to think of it as, as literally a ball of putty in your hand. You know, you're kind of moulding it around. Uh, you, you're kind of squeezing it and squishing it into new shapes. So try and keep the volume there in the shape. So, you know, I've kind of elongated uh, the first circle there. And this one is kind of almost like a, a bean or a, a peanut shape. So, you know, this shape would be quite good for a head or a torso shape. And again, this one here, you know, I've kind of um, bulged out the bottom area and the top is thinner. So it's almost like uh, shape wise, it'd be great for a head or a torso. And it just reminds me of a kind of like a the shape of a Russian doll, you know, where you've got the doll inside of the doll and so on. So, you know, again, I'm just thinking of these shapes. What do they remind me of? Uh, what would they be useful for uh, within my character design? So, you know, this one here, I'm just kind of bulging out in one area, you know, so we've got a kind of thinner top piece and bulged out at the, uh, the bottom area. And this one's uh, more or less egg shaped. So, you know, you could use this for a head or a body again. Uh, you could switch it so you could flip this, this shape upside down and use it that way. Okay, so there's a, a selection of basic shapes that have all been pushed in various directions there. So definitely something worth practicing, you know, in uh, Toon Boom Studio or, um, you know, in your sketchbook. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm now taking shapes 
Um, I'm looking at the idea of combining these now. So I've got a square and a triangle. So uh, not not kind of manipulating the the shapes as such at the moment. You know, just keeping these nice and simple, but just showing that you know you can combine these shapes uh, to create other shapes and the foundation for your design. So this top one with a square and the upside down triangle, you can see there, you know, you could create a head shape from that, you know, almost a pointed chin at the bottom there. And this one, you've got um, a circle with the square pushed into a, a vertical kind of rectangle there. So it's almost uh, the shape of a keyhole. So you could create a head shape with that. Uh, with kind of like a long jaw, something like that. Okay, so now we're going for an upside down triangle. And running through this triangle, we've now got a circle. So again, this would make a pretty good head shape. You could see there we could use the circle for the head. Uh, maybe that triangle at the top there we could use for kind of maybe a mohawk hairstyle. So again, this is just the way I'm thinking about the shapes. You know, there's three very different designs there. Okay, so now we're looking at pushing these shapes and combining them. So... You know, I've taken this square, uh, I've kept the top and the bottom planes horizontal, you know, they're, they're kind of uh, stayed as they are. The sides I've kind of pushed in, so I've squeezed those in and we've attached a triangle that we've kind of bulged out. So again, you know, we can see their foundation for a head shape. You can see, you know, kind of a, a thinner top head bows out towards the cheekbones so we've got a, a big chin area there going down into a point so you know we're at the stage now where we we're really thinking about the shapes you know where can we push them what can we create so this one we've got a circle that i've just kind of pushed narrower at the top and bulged it out at the base and you know i've taken a square here and i've I've created an entirely different shape. You know, the top plane is is left as is. The sides I've pushed in and the bottom I've bulged out. So again, I've got this tiny top segment for a head for the cranium. And then we've got this kind of very thin cheekbone area that widens right out into the bottom of the jaw there. Created a very long head. Okay, so this one, um, I've taken a triangle and I've kind of bowed out the top area. So I've kind of um, pushed it out. We've pulled the insides of the triangle inward. And again, just taken a circle and pushed pushed it outward. So we could almost create a, a version of the mohawk on the left there. So these shapes on the right you can see are variations of the ones on the left. You know, they're the same shapes, just pushed. So I'm just cleaning up a few lines here and you'll notice um, I'm just using the brush tool in Toon Boom Studio and we're just working nice and sketchy, nice and loose. You know, we don't want to straight off the bat, we don't want to create stunning artwork in the, the thought process stage. You know, we want to keep it nice and loose, try and work a little bit faster and then when we tighten up the designs, that's when we start to, you know, look at adding the inking and the colouring. So in the design process, you know, we're just working very sloppy, very sketchy. Um, you know, we make lots of um, decisions along the way. So we'll make lots of changes, a few mistakes on the way. It's all part of the process. You'll never, ever get a design perfect straight away. You know, you, 
you're constantly thinking you've got to keep uh, kind of changing things you know you'll, you'll always find something that you can change or something's not level from one side to the other so um, you know it's very rare that you'll hit hit a design running and get it straight off the bat how you want it there will always be corrections and amendments so here what I'm doing I'm just putting in very very simple um, features just just to show um, these shapes here so you know this isn't the lesson on the facial features we're just kind of dropping this in to show the ideas so uh, for this one you know I I've moved the face up and we've created this big kind of wide mouth and jaw area here so if I'd moved the head all the way down into that circle we could then use that triangle as maybe that mohawk hair so that's another way we could use that so that's just a very very simple um, demonstration of using shapes in their simplest form and just adding some details there okay so we're still working with the uh, basic shapes here so these are all exercises that are you know I I'd really highly recommend practicing daily you know here I've just again we're just starting with the very simple shapes um, you know we're, we're not manipulating them at the moment um, but what I'm doing here I'm taking more than two shapes I'm working with three shapes here to see what we can come up with so I've got a square uh, then I've got a circle and a triangle underneath so here you can see again another way of creating a head shape um, you know we've got a kind of square top head um, then it then we go down longer so it's kind of a longer head and we go down into a kind of pointed chin area okay so now I'm thinking about you know how can I push the shapes now so uh, I'm thinking of the square I'm bulging out the top I'm pulling in the sides and now with the circle I'm thinking you know which way do I want to go with this so I'm kind of pulling it horizontally so I'm kind of stretching it out create this nice wide oval so this is a variation of the design on the left here so you know just showing that I'm taking basic shapes and then I'm thinking about pushing them and now with the triangle just kind of bulging this outwards and again here you can see the uh, basis for a nice head shape there it's almost the shape of a, a vase so you know something you could put flowers in so again you know I'm just thinking you know these shapes always remind you of something uh, so looking at these everyday objects can seep into your character designs okay so here what we can do again we can look at adding some basic features into these and, and seeing what ideas we can come up with Okay, so I'm just erasing, you know, these intersecting points of the shapes. Um, I don't need these at the moment. So late, later on in the lessons to follow, we, we look at the, um, you know, creating some nice features and, and placement within the head area. Um, but for the moment, you know, this, this is just to literally demonstrate, um, you know, that the shape I've just created, we, we can use for a head. So you can see how simple that was, you know, just creating those nice shapes there has given us the foundation for a, a good character design. So, you know, you don't just have to draw a circle for a head. You can get a lot more creative. Just think of these shapes, combine them and, and just see how many variations you can come up with. You know, try a uh, long and narrow, um, you know, short and kind of huskier, uh, things like that so you know there's lots of different ways you can work with these shapes so definitely um, a good place to start you know fill pages in your sketchbook with these ideas combining the basic shapes and stretching them so you know start with the exercise on stretching the shapes then combining and seeing how many variations you can come up with
Now moving on, we're going to take these basic shapes and start to create the foundations for our characters. So here I'm creating a head shape. So I've taken a square and I've kept the top straight and I've kind of pinched in the sides here and created a big strong jaw at the bottom. So curve this line out and this line that I've drawn across the head here. So going through the head, this is the shoulders. So you'll notice I've created one line and this is to make sure that the shoulders are level on each side. If I drew two separate lines for shoulders, you know, I run the risk of having uneven shoulders. So drawing it all the way through there just strengthens that design. So I've got a big heavy set character here. I've got a big strong jaw and a big torso. And I'm kind of contrasting this with, you know, kind of thinner legs, almost like this um, This guy's been working out, but he's concentrating only on the top part of his body. You know, he's trying to be as buff as possible, but, um, you know, he's kind of neglecting working out the legs. Okay, so it's just simple shapes here. We're not using anything too complex. Um, and you can see here that, you know, straight away we're creating a character you know we've, we've just got a very very simple framework that we can build on so throughout the layers you know we'll build build up layers and drawings and we'll start to refine the design as we go along you know working from general to particular adding more detail as we go along you know at this stage we're not going to be adding cufflinks and shoelaces you know that that comes later um, so I've just duplicated this character and I'm filling it with solid black um, because I want to quickly discuss the importance of silhouette. Um, you know, as we can see here, we've got the same character and the one on the right, you know, if, if he was standing in darkness and he was just backlit and you could just see his overall shape, you know, could you recognise him? This, you know, when you're creating the character, you want it to be as iconic as possible. The strength in the design at this stage is very important. So here I'm creating another character. So this one's shorter. Um, kind of got a long kind of arched body here, you know, this big long torso. Um, you know, this torso could almost be hunched over. You know, it's very kind of... Um, very kind of long and stooped almost and we've got this head shape which is just uh, an oval so it's kind of hit, hanging lower on the shoulders here so you can tell this character's kind of stooped or hunched over so you know this could be an older character maybe an old old man or an old lady you know we've got this big long heavy body and these tiny little legs you know, we've got little triangles for feet there. And I'm just lengthening this leg. Um, you know, it's a bit too short, so I've just used the transform tool to bring that down to the correct length there. And notice, you know, for each body part, we're just using one shape at the moment. So the head, for these examples, is just one shape. We're not looking at, you know, combining shapes. We, we're trying to look at things in their most simple form at the moment. So again, the shoulders going straight through the head there. So we can see we've got level shoulders um, and the arms here. You can um, you could pretty much imagine this character holding heavy bags of shopping. So this could indeed be an old person with their their groceries. Okay, so again, it's just um, a simple copy and paste. And we're going to fill this character with black just to show the silhouette, the importance of the overall shape of this character. So you can see the contrast here between the two characters. If they were standing side by side, in darkness it's you can clearly see who is who
Okay, so let's create a, another character here. This one's going to be slightly taller and narrower. So we've got just a long oval for the head. And kind of copying that shape for the torso almost. So we've not got much in the way of shoulders here. You know, this is a very slender character. So we can build the arms off of that little point between the head and the start of the torso there. So we've got some nice thin legs here that taper towards the ankle. So they get thinner as they go down. So at this point, I'm adding the arms in that that little um, point where the torso meets the, the head there. And thinking about volume, so, you know, making sure each body part is consistent. So making sure that each arm is the same thickness, uh, same with the legs. And at this point, I'm not too concerned with, you know, too many details, um, you know, this arm is a little bit shorter than the one on the left. So in the next layer, I would play around with making making sure that everything is very consistent. I'm just concerned at the moment with the overall shape. You know, I just want to be happy with the overall shape of the character and the silhouette and the strength in the very, very basic design. So again, we're just copying and pasting. I just want to fill this one in. Again, with just the paint bucket tool, just to demonstrate the um, silhouette concept again. So here you can see three very different character shapes here. And remember, we've only used very, very simple shapes here. You know, we're looking at about 10... 10 shapes per character when you break it down so it's not a lot what I'm doing here I'm copying this character placing them side by side um, just to demonstrate if these were three different characters standing in darkness and they're backlit could you tell them apart now if they were fully lit and they had different faces, different hair colour, different colour costumes. You'd know which character was which. But, you know, if they're in complete darkness and you're looking at these, you, you wouldn't really know who was who. So, again, this just strengthens and backs up the theory of making sure that the oval shape and silhouette matters. That everything's different, that the sizes are different, the volumes... You know, think about the personality of your characters. You know, we've got this big heavy set guy on the far right. We've got this kind of hunched over, huskier character here. And this kind of tall, slender one. So, you know, they can each reflect a, a different personality. You know, this character could be quite sort of uh, brutish, for instance. The one on the far left could be kind of craggy or timid and slow. Okay, so you can see here the three different characters side by side. Now, in complete darkness, you're going to know which character is which. They're, they're just so different. So, you know, think about this all the time. Every character you design, just think straight away about the overall shape and size of each character. So if you've got to, you know, create a cast of characters for your production, you know, try and vary it as much as you can unless of course your storyline involves clones or something like that um, but you know that's going to be a rare case okay so let's create another character here so this this is a more angular design so you know a bit more uh, kind of sharper thinner So again, just drawing through that head shape to make sure the shoulders 
a level and this torso is kind of identical to the head shape you know I've just copied it and made a larger version so here we're just creating some very very thin legs they're very stick like very long again these taper down you know we've got these broad angular shoulders these thin legs you know it's almost the shape of an arrowhead okay so nice thin arms you know this is the kind of character that would look ideal in something like a double breasted suit jacket you know very kind of uh, suave and debonair so again let's um, copy and paste and demonstrate the uh, silhouette Okay, so moving on to another character here, let's um, look at this shape here. This is kind of like a, a pear shape, so this, this bulges out towards the, the bottom of the shape. So this would actually make quite a good head shape, as well as a body shape. You know, the volume's at the bottom there, so it kind of indicates a huskier feel so I'm looking at these legs there they're very kind of short stubby so it have small feet to suit so you know the legs these are just made up of pretty much triangles so I've got a combination of shapes here um, and also think of you know try and make the shapes interesting and and fun especially if you're creating like a an animation or a design that's geared towards humor or a, a younger audience you know try and you know make make the shapes as funny and interesting as possible so this is a good example of that that in that you know we've got this really huge body design you know the head goes straight into this wide body so it's a quite quite a fun shape to work with so again just working with the the um, the silhouette idea here Okay, so this head is really sunken down into these shoulders and what we're seeing here is a kind of reverse body shape of the previous one so we've got a huge huge top half of the body and it goes into this kind of tiny waist here you know it's a very kind of hulk like torso you know quite bulky and powerful You know, I always like to put these kind of skinnier legs on these these bigger characters. It just just seems to to work really well. Okay, so these are kind of like ape ape like arms hanging down. These big ham fists all curled up at the base here. So just making him bigger. 
And again, what we need to do here is just look at the overall shape. You know, black this character out and see how he stands as a, as a strong, strong design from the start. You know, again, we're working with, you know, when you divide these shapes up, you've got the head, the torso, the legs, the feet, the arms and the hands. You've got 10 shapes per character for something this, this simple. So it's not, not too difficult, bearing in mind that, you know, each shape is duplicated on either side so you know there's there's not that many shapes so you can see on this this uh, screen here that we've got quite a a good selection here of different shapes Okay, so I'm just deleting the, the kind of outline versions and just lining up all the kind of blacked out silhouette versions just so we can see a line up here of um, characters. So you can see, you know, we've got a cast of characters here and we've got lots, lots of variation between all of them. You know, you could create a personality and a character for each one of these and you could tell them all apart. Okay, something else that's worth bearing in mind is something called negative space, which is what's being highlighted here. Now, this is the area between your parts so here we've got a nice shape between the torso and the arm so all these kind of negative spaces help to strengthen a design you know you don't want too much clutter and um you know kind of things like that going on you know what we've got here we've got just this nice kind of tapered point up to where the underarm goes and it kind of widens out toward the fist in that area there so just pulling this out just to show that negative space and again here on this character we've got this nice kind of shape here You know, so be be mindful of these kind of designs within your characters also. You know, it's look everywhere. You know, it's uh that they're, they're all important segments of each character. So it's just something I wanted to quickly touch on that you, you may not may not have looked at before. Okay, so I'm creating another another character here, but this time um, I'm putting more shapes into it. So I'm creating, um, you know, the head is made up of two shapes combined. So I've got the, the circle shape and the square that's been stretched around. So we've got this kind of big cranium and this long tapered jaw. Uh, thin neck so we're working with more parts now so we're, we're creating a more complex design so you know we can go from the very simple um, shapes to you know combining these and, and building up a more complex character okay so we've got this 
torso here and notice the shoulders drawn through to the other side again and just remember to work keep working nice and loose at the moment you know there's no there's no point getting too carried away with being neat and tidy just you know just sketch throw the shapes down on the page so I'm just rotating this um, went a bit wide with that arm with the angle Okay, so these legs taper to a point and I'm going to embellish these slightly so working with triangles for the feet and here I'm just kind of bulking out the thighs of the legs and then bringing in some kind of shape to the calf area and on the hands here just an indication of a thumb there okay so again working with this silhouette theory so taking a copy of the character blocking it out It's a good idea to do this when you get this far with the character just to see if the overall shape you know kind of appeals to you you know you only need to look at a certain cartoon mouse with um, big round ears to uh, see how important silhouette is you know if you block that character out in darkness you know straight away uh, that character okay so you can see here again we've got a nice nice strong design there with the the shapes that we've embellished Okay, so I'm just bringing out that thigh a little bit. It was a bit thin, but again, you know, at this stage, I'm not not too concerned. We'll um, we'll we'll create more detail as we go along. You know, you can fill pages up with these ideas. Okay, so let's. Um, Add this one to the lineup, and you can see that it's uh, slightly more complex than the previous design. So it all comes down to individual style. So you know, if you want a very sim simplified style, or if you want to go a bit more complex, uh, that's down to the um, you know personal preference and the style of the cartoon. Um, Obviously, time constraints also come into play. Um, you know, do you have the time to create a more complex character, especially if you're going to create side views and so on? Um, so here I'm just outlining some of the interesting shapes that we've got on this character. You know, these nice lines that we've got. We've got these nice curves in the leg, this kind of shape here down the head and around the jaw. So... You know, we've got these nice shapes all around the body here. So, you know, bearing in mind your negative shapes, the negative spaces. Okay, so that demonstrates using these basic shapes to create the foundation for your characters. Um, definitely, you know, feel pages in your sketchbook up with these ideas and and keep the ideas um which is also very important you know don't just sketch and throw pictures away you know it's always good to look back on things as reference to see how you've progressed and also you might come up with interesting shapes that you can use in the future so 
catalog everything um, and you know use this as your stepping stone to create the characters so what we'll do in the next lessons we'll move on and start to develop more detail